The next day, Sweeney and crew return unannounced to Scientology's Los Angeles complex, the same place he already filmed two days earlier, but claimed he didn't have time to see. This time, he bangs on a seldom used fire door at the back of the building while his cameras roll. If anyone had been at this unmanned door, here's what John Sweeney would have found. But he got what he wanted, and just to make sure, he filmed two more takes. It is unacceptable in news and factual programs to stage or restage significant action or events. If you, as a journalist, set about faking reality and presenting it to your audience as the truth, the reality, then that is deeply reprehensible. I mean, there's no getting away from that. That is, that is the worst sort of distortion and propagandizing. This is real dumbing down. And, you know, the BBC should be ashamed of allowing this sort of behavior. Back in London, Sweeney's behavior takes a darker and uglier turn. He shows up at the London premiere of Wild Hogs, starring John Travolta, who is there to promote the film. Posing as a fan, Sweeney shouts insults from the crowd while being filmed by his producer. He started becoming very loud, very animated, throwing his arms in the air and causing such a racket that people around him was looking at him and actually getting separated from him. It definitely looked like a setup. The camera was in an angle where he had a panoramic view of everything that was going on, including the uh, the person yelling and screaming obscenities. So he was totally uh, in the fan area. He was not where he was supposed to be. So I thought that he was just uh, a deranged uh, individual, honestly. I didn't know he was a journalist. And uh, again, what a shame. Three days later, Sweeney's five-man crew films four protesters across the street from a church community center in London, staging yet another event while his cameras roll. A church executive confronts Sweeney and asks him point blank if he orchestrated the picket. It's not my demonstration. It's got nothing to do with me. How did you know they were here? Um, we uh, we heard about it because um, uh, no, they, uh, we heard about it because of um, we were in touch with them over the previous demonstration. But in December 2006, an internet posting by one of the picketers reveals that Sweeney and Sarah Mole had scheduled this demonstration for the purpose of filming it. This time, the consequences of Panorama's staged event went far beyond fabricated news footage for a television program. That same day, the church receives anonymous terrorist threats sent from an internet cafe a few hundred yards away. A police investigation is underway. When you start taking a look at uh, threats against organizations that could be classified as terrorist related threats, police take those very seriously and they engage in proactive investigations. This type of negative publicity can generate uh, animosity and anger and threats. Because media has got this ability of having either a positive or a negative feedback. By creating a story, running with it, they can influence society, uh, overall society. So in a way, they are, they are put in a very sensitive position of really damaging or helping society. When the media says it's not powerful and not influential, I mean, it's denying a self-evident truth to me. It, it, is, it is very powerful in forming people's minds. Uh, and that's why I think in terms of uh, news, current affairs, documentaries, there's got to be an enormous amount of care taken and by journalists themselves, by the program makers, and by those um, in authority within the BBC itself. But that care was noticeably absent when Scientology executives repeatedly contacted the BBC requesting a face-to-face -face meeting to address the biased and unprofessional conduct of the Panorama team. They offered dozens of documents and even video as proof, but BBC executives refused to look. Instead, they defended Sweeney, asserting he was in complete compliance with all journalistic guidelines. The broadcast codes are very explicit when it comes to the treatment of religion. 
the religious views and beliefs of those belonging to a particular religion or religious denomination must not be subject to abusive treatment. Yet Sweeney's disregard for the code is unmistakable. Nearly 80% of his questions directed at the Church of Scientology and Scientologists were abusive, dismissive, or degrading. While the BBC was defending John Sweeney's behavior, the European Court of Human Rights handed down a decision in a case between the Church of Scientology and the Russian government. It made clear that every European government has a legal obligation to ensure that the most basic and fundamental rights granted to all religions are not violated. This decision underscores the obligation of the BBC as a government organ to treat Scientology and all other religions with respect and impartiality. There's a very serious danger of uh, defining particular groups uh, in a way which prejudges uh, and therefore is treating uh, them inequitably. The thing that worries me most is the way in which um, some unexamined assumptions um, get taken as read. Uh, so Church of England congregations in free fall, uh, Roman Catholic Church doesn't do much about sex abuse, Opus Dei, Scientology, Moonies are all uh, mind-numbing and brainwashing cults. I mean, those are the sorts of things that uh, are often taken for granted uh, as if these are um, as if these are proven. I can list you half a dozen cases where this has happened. So we are actually saying very bluntly and very blatantly that the BBC, especially BBC programs that relate to religion or spirituality are run by people who should not be in position of power there. The um, replicability um, of uh, the media and its permeation um, into uh, the fabric of our lives uh, that makes the power that is potentially there and therefore calls for the responsibility uh, that's needed um, in, in its use and those who work within it. In preparing his program, it is noted John Sweeney and his Panorama team would have violated the BBC and Ofcom broadcast codes 154 times, all in pursuit of a contrived story that perverted the truth. Their lawless disregard for basic human rights and common decency was paid for with your license fees. Who will Panorama squander your money on next?